Welcome back to Radio Alpha. Up next, a special charity broadcast from the Oxford University Light Entertainment Society. Please do not adjust your radio set. The smoke is normal and coming from the outside. Sit back and welcome to the radio show at the end of the world. This is Radio Alpha 69.3 FM Good evening to all of our listeners who have managed to survive. I'm Ellis Goodman. And I'm Diana Russell. And you're listening to Radio Alpha. The only radio station you need because all the others have gone now. Radio Alpha is the only one that is left. It's only us now. Coming up tonight. Will the end of all life as we know it affect you? I'll be taking your calls and asking the hard questions to find out. Meanwhile, our lead reporter, Terry, will be keeping us updated on what the situation is outside. It's bad, Diana. Thank you, Terry. Everything's on fire, Diana. But first, the headlines. The leading story tonight is, of course, the fact that the world is ending. Yes, the world, the one that you live in, is no longer going to continue. This has been attributed to the various disasters that have struck around the globe, including the fires caused by Satan's gateway to hell, also the giant meteor that will soon destroy us all. Yes, these are unprecedented times. But not for long, as time itself will most likely end too. That's right, Ellis. Uh, breaking news! The city of Milton Keynes has been lost to Satan's demonic hordes! Milton Keynes, famously the only centre of human resistance left against the apocalypse, has now been surrendered to the hellfire that has spread forth from the screaming pit. Thousands of lives have been lost, as well as several million roundabouts. Official sources on the street describe the scene as bad, bad and more flammable than one would expect. We would now take you to a reporter at the streets, but unfortunately the streets are no longer, and neither is Milton Keynes or our reporter. The government has responded by lowering interest rates. The government are now advising people to avoid slough. Just in general. Just don't go there, they said. Like, why would you? Don't do it. What's wrong with you? Breaking 
breaking news. We're here with updates on the breaking news. Live on your radios, it's breaking news today. There's a meteor in the sky, heading straight for Downing Street. Astronomers have determined we're all going to die. The government has been asked for comment. They say the PM's in a nuclear bunker, so everything's fine. Breaking news. We're here with updates on the breaking news. Live on your radios, it's breaking First up, a brand new documentary starring David Attenborough investigating the secret life of traffic cones in The Secret Life of Traffic Cones, starring David Attenborough. <laughs> we do like traffic cones. I don't. Why? Too pointy. I uh, apologise, listeners. Uh, sorry, there seems to be some interference. Other signals are getting through. Be back soon. Hello? Is anyone here? Can anyone hear me? Hello? Everything has gone completely insane and nobody seems to even care that everything's gone to hell. I don't even know if there's anyone left out there but me. I'm probably just talking to nothing, aren't I? This makes no sense! Oh, I just want things to make sense! What was that? Oh my god, I'm hearing things now! Right, right, keep it together, Mitchell. I woke up this morning and the whole world was falling apart. When I tuned into the news, there was only some stupid, pointless documentary about traffic cones, and I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Hey, I listened to that. It was pretty great, honestly. Over. What? Yeah! I had no idea traffic cones could be used for so many things. Over! Who are you? I'm young. Over. Why do you keep saying over? Why do I keep saying what? Over. You keep finishing your sentences with the word over. With the word? Over. Just because you have a walkie-talkie doesn't mean you have to say over. <sighs> over. Oh, yeah, but I want to. I'm just here, living my best life, <laughs> apart from all the fires and stuff. <laughs> Over. Do you know what's happening? <laughs> I'm a grad student. I have no clue what's going on, ever. <laughs> I really hope it doesn't mess up my exams, because I really can't afford another retake. Over. Your exams? Yeah, I forgot they were coming up so soon, and I kind of forgot to revise for them. Um, and I've got this coursework I have to get done, but my computer exploded, and that's got to count as extenuating circumstances, right? <laughs> <sighs> I feel better getting that off my chest. Thanks. Oh, who are you? Over. I'm Mitchell, and I don't understand what's going on! You're a math student too, right? <laughs> Over. No, I just want to understand why everything is on fire, why nobody cares, and why my entire life is spiralling out of control! I'll drink to that. Over. Please stop saying over. Hey, can you both be quiet? You're giving me a headache. Thanks. Hello? I am trying to listen to emergency broadcasts and I'd prefer it if you didn't keep shouting over the radio. You forgot to say over. Over. No, I didn't. Goodbye. Wait, 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 wait. Don't go. Tell me what's happening. World is ending. And? Well, I'm not going to go outside to find out anything else, am I? But I need to know! Sounds like your problem. Where I'm at, it's all flooding and Satan. You know, Satan? Not as sexy as I thought he'd be. Over. 
I don't care how sexy Satan is! Once again, I am trying to survive here. Can you please shut up? I'm trying to survive too! My whole room is flooded. <laughs> Over! Then leave the room. Damn, that is a great idea. <laughs> Thanks, mystery voice. Over! It's older. Now go away. No, 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 no. You're not allowed to leave. You're going to stay here and help me figure all this out and get somewhere safe. I'm already somewhere safe. Great. Where are you? We should all meet up. There's safety in numbers. I can try and figure out a safe route to yours. <laughs> I don't really want you in my house. Can I come too? My house is underwater now. Over. Uh, you're both going to die without my help, aren't you? Great. Look. I have a bunch of maps. I can give direction to somewhere else you can go. It really makes more sense if we go to yours, you know? I know. I just don't want you to. Even if it's detrimental to all of our survival, I'd rather just die alone. So, when are we going over? Over. Okay, if we're all going to join up to survive, I am banning the use of that word in any context, especially at the end of sentences, okay? Copy that. Over. Oh my god! As soon as I meet you in person, I'm drowning you. I will help. Oh no. Looking through this telescope was a mistake. Oh god. It's got us surrounded. No! There's space over here too! Is anywhere safe? Please come in immediately. This is the government speaking. Yes, I'm here. Listen here. It is important this line is secure. Do you understand? Uh, maybe? That will have to do. As you may have noticed, this is an emergency situation and we need solutions as quick as possible. We are contacting the leading scientists in each field and as the world's premier space scientists, we need you to investigate and brief us on all of the space dangers that are coming for us. Space what? Space dangers, among other things. Other things? That's classified, Brian. Uh, I'm not Brian. This isn't Brian Cox. No, this is his brother, Ted. We have no record of a Ted Cox. It's short for unwanted. Ah, um, um... Can I speak with the scientist, please? I am a scientist. I do all the hard work and get no credit. The research is mine. All he does is sex it up and present it to the public. And what is wrong with that? Sounds wonderful. Don't say that. What? Wonder. And the wonders of the universe are astounding. Did you know that millions upon millions of stars watch over us every second? Glowing infernally in the hev... Are you on the phone, Ted? It's the government. About the situation. Good evening, Professor Cox. Ah, yes. The current situation. I have the perfect metaphor to explain this. A metaphor that needs a fully funded trip to the south of France. I'm afraid we cannot let you travel right now. We need to keep this quiet to keep news from getting out. Then why did you get in contact with Brian Cox? He's simply cooler and sexier than you are. He plays better with the general public. But we're not going public with this. No. Under no circumstances can the public be informed about your research. But... I'm glad you understand. I have sent you all the information you should need. If you discover anything, contact me immediately. I have to go now. I have to prepare for a radio interview, so I'll be out of contact for that time. Wait, that's all the information we get? They're gone. Oh god, we don't have the budget for this. We don't even have a budget! But what about the essential travel expenses that I need to properly explain the wonders of the universe. You don't need those! But to properly save the world, we need to go to a luxury chalet in the Swiss Alps. Just like we needed to go to the Bahamas to explain gravity? Well, of course. The whirlpools that formed there were the perfect vessel to describe the amazing process of black hole formation. What about the cruise? Cruise ships are a surprisingly good model 
for the motion of the planets, unflinchingly relentless through space, leaving great disturbances in their wake, just like the gravitational waves only recently discovered. And the spa weekend? Brian Cox needed a holiday. Don't talk about yourself in the third person. Brian Cox always speaks about himself in the third person. That's not a thing. That's never been a thing. Brian Cox disagrees. Brian Cox thinks this has always been a thing that Brian Cox does. Brian Cox spent all our research funds on overpriced metaphors and now we're all doomed. Brian Cox isn't the brains of this operation, so Brian Cox doesn't get an opinion. Brian Cox finds that hurtful. Well, let's look through the telescope and see what we're dealing with. Ah! I'm sorry, I forgot how big space was. It's, it's really big. Ah, yes. Space is infinite. As infinitely big as your cowardice. I just don't like it, okay? It's scary. Okay, I'm gonna look again. Ah! I'm okay. I just forgot it was there. It's too big. We should have stopped space after Saturn. We don't need this many planets, it's unnecessary. Yes, Saturn. The glorious ringed planet. The second of the gas giants filled with swirling vortexes and wind speeds beyond anything on our planet. Despite its power, the gases that make up the celestial body are light enough that Saturn would float, if it were still there. What? Saturn is gone. That's an alien spaceship coming for us. What? Oh no! Yes. Just as the universe began, it will come to an end. Not if I can stop it. Do you have a plan? Well, no. Do you? For me, our true significance lies in our ability to understand this beautiful universe. So here's a song about how you can rely on us. No, Brian, we're not doing a song. And if we were, which we're not, we would do it much more like this. When aliens come calling, there's only one man for the job. I'm just as clever, maybe more, it's just because they all adore My dictation was out of this world, I'm not scared of space That helps. I was in a bando, hi ladies Let's save the world, it'll be a breeze Ted, this is our time Space is brilliant, no need to be a verse But Brian, it's just too big there's an alien spaceship, things can't get any worse. The wonders of the universe, we're Cox. The brothers Cox, we're scientists and always thinking outside the box. We're Cox, a pair of Cox, I'm on TV. You don't know me. Is anyone making a documentary? And now fireworks. But the budget! Fine. Saxophone. Solo. Where did you get a saxophone? Paradox, of course, 
Oh, oh Brian, please don't start this again. He said, even though we're all gonna die, we've all got to live in the meantime. It's literally the end of the world. You're ruining my monologue. The moon is on fire and Saturn is gone. There really isn't time to be singing this song. But Ted, this is our time. Space is brilliant. No need to be averse. But Brian, it's just too big. There's an alien spaceship. Things can't get any worse. The wonders of the universe. Where it comes, the brothers cuss. The unwanted. And the safety, we just tick every box away. To save the world. I've got the brain. I've got the face. So what are we gonna do? about space oh actually i have an idea there problem solved what did that do well nothing but now i don't have to look at it anymore no turn it back turn it back the moon also appears to be on fire Surprising, as the rocks that make up our great natural satellite are... No monologuing! Let me look. Oh, that is definitely the moon. And it's definitely on fire. Not on my watch! Ah! Alien spaceship's still there! Alien spaceship's still there! Is it bigger? Oh no! It is! Isn't it? Ah, yes. When things far away from us move nearer, they appear to become bigger. But in actual fact, they are the same size. Ah! Sorry, I just saw space again. Why is there space everywhere? This is why they don't let you present on BBC Two, you know. Unwanted Cox. This is Radio Alpha. And you're back with Radio Alpha. We will endeavour to solve these technical issues, and we thank you for being patient with us. Unless, of course, you are not patient, in which case, you can go to hell. Radio Alpha. The government has officially announced the long-awaited ban on Marmite-flavoured pizza toppings, following pressure from lobbying groups and parents to finally rid the world of this menace. In other news, Everyone is still engulfed in flames, with no relief in sight. In other other news, a giant intergalactic spacecraft has entered Earth's atmosphere, armed with weapons beyond our simple comprehension, and presumably an undying hatred for humankind. And in other 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 news, cricket. And in other 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 news, nothing. That is all the news. This concludes the news. But in regards to the previous news we mentioned, the news about everything being on fire and this not being a good thing, we go live to our man on the ground, Terry, for the latest. Are you still alive, Terry? Unfortunately, yes, Diana. I'm speaking to you from the ground, and it is a sight for sore eyes. Oh, God! My sore eyes! I'm currently here with Pete, who says he saw this apocalypse coming. Pete! Yeah, I've been saying for years that the world was going to end. For years! But now it's happened, no one even wants to speak to me. I'm speaking to you, even though I don't really want to, Pete. I always said that Satan was going to come out of that roundabout. I warned the council about it again and again, but they wouldn't listen. They called me mad! They called me dangerous! They called me on my phone and said I was banned from all public libraries. <laughs> but who's the loser now? You are, Pete. What? 
We're all going to die, Pete. Oh! How does that make you feel, Pete? Sad. Back to the studio, Diana. Thanks, Terry. We'll keep you updated on any updates. Updated on any updates? No wonder no one listens to radio anymore. Up next, some interview with some guy or something. (laughs) Stanley Abbott will be hearing from experts about what we currently know. Whatever. If you're not putting any effort in, then neither am I. Hello again. I'm Stanley Abbott, here in the Interview Lounge. The Interview Lounge. First up, I have Nicholas Whittlesby, official chairperson for the Anti-Apocalypse Governmental Group, AAGG for short, or ah, for loud. So Nick, can I call you Nick? No, you may not. So Nicky, what is the government's position at this point in time? The government feels very strongly here that this end of the world talk is a huge overreaction. To put it plainly, it's lots of nonsense about a very minor problem affecting a very small group of people. Why can't you just admit what's really happening? If the government had been as prepared as me, then maybe we wouldn't be in this mess right now. We are also joined tonight by Alison Prepper, an outspoken apocalypse survival planner. Isn't that fun? The government is not advocating for fun at this point in time. I've been preparing for an end time event for most of my life. I am in a good position here. But it seems the government really isn't putting the same effort in. The government has taken a firm position. The position of the government is that everything is perfectly fine and you don't have to listen to the people dying if you don't want to. So people are dying? That's bad, right? Oh no! Let me explain, Stanley. Hard-working British families. I've got to say, I'm confused. Are we for or against the apocalypse? People are dying! Hmm. Sounds like a strong point in the against column. That is not the government's position. But it is the truth. The truth is not the official government's position at this point in time. What is the government's position? It is a strong position. Well, that all sounds fine then. So, Alison, what do you expect? Well, as I said, I am prepared for anything. All sorts of apocalyptic scenarios. I have a deep bunker installed, filled with enough toilet paper and beans to keep myself alive indefinitely for decades. Wow, I'm sure all those cans of beans and hoarded toilet paper will be sure to do a lot of good against the meteor. Could you... Make a trampoline out of them and bounce it back into space. That sounds like a good idea. No, you couldn't. Oh, I've wasted my whole life. So, what's your plans now? (laughs) I guess I'm going to eat all the breadsticks off your buffet table (laughs) while crying. Have fun. We'll now be taking some calls from our listeners. (laughs) My life is a waste. Our next caller is... Roger Blighty. Nice to hear from you again, Roger. It's not nice to have to speak again, let me tell you, Stanley. You see, the problem is those self-service checkout machines judging me for my purchases. I sense a tone of judgement whenever I scan my food. There's nothing wrong with mushroom soup, and I don't like its attitude when it asks me if I brought my own bag. And you know the worst part? The staff there don't even let you fight them fair and square. They just chuck you out without your beans. Is this what this country has come to? What exactly is your point? I don't need a point. Let me speak. And there were just too many flavours in the shop too. Back in my day, flour was considered a spice. We boiled all our foods, even bread. And soggy bread was a staple of this country. But now we've forgotten our ways. We're toasting our loaves like the continentals. Next thing we know, we'll be teaching continental philosophy. If I wanted to hear French babble on about things I don't understand, I'd go to France. And I'll be damned if I ever go there. Listen here. Government cliché. Did you just say government cliché to me? Ah, well, thanks for calling in. Our next caller seems to be requesting to speak to you, Nicholas. Uh, hi. It's me. Who is this? Ted. Ted Cox. Remember? I told you not to call me, especially not on public radio. I couldn't get a hold of you any other way. We've got a big problem. How big? Well, it's through a telescope, so it's hard to tell. But it's big and scary, and I don't like it, and I want it to go away! 
What's this we're talking about? Some kind of government secret. Uh... Well, um, it appears the signal's going, so we'll have to leave it at that. Uh, the signal's fine for me. And we've still got plenty of time. No, we definitely need to hang up right now. Goodbye. No! I don't want to leave. Please don't leave me here. I'm sure everyone here is very busy. Who are you talking to, Ted? Is that a documentary? Who is this sexy voiced man? No, Brian, not now! No, Brian. Give me the phone. I'm on the phone, I'm on the radio. Ted, give, give me back. the phone. Get Brian back. Cox wants Get off my documentary. Give me the phone. Give me the phone. On the radio. Well, I hope they aren't dead. Next call is from a. Dvorak? Is that how it's pronounced? Dvorak, you are live. Mine back! I don't approve of you cutting me off like that. Now, as I was saying about the French. Hello, puny humans. I am Dvorak. Dvorak is I. I have seen your lives, pathetic as they are. I have seen your souls, weak and flimsy. I have seen your internet, hornier than it should be. I have seen all, and I am all. I think this must be a wrong call. Let me be completely open and honest here. Robust plan. Well, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for tonight. I will not be hung up on. Dvorak will not be hung up on, and I am Dvorak. I am now in control of your pathetic radio show, with its airways filled with wobbly air that confuses and excites me. This is my message to all humans, and some of the smarter horses. I declare myself ruler over this world. I will be a cruel and unforgiving god. You will despair before me. Your air shall wobble with the cries of orphans and dead orphans. Dvorak shall be all. All shall be Dvorak. That was a political broadcast on behalf of the... Dvorak to destroy Earth Party. I will not be silenced, placid voice man. Dvorak is loud, and Dvorak is merciless. Dvorak! Looking forward to seeing you soon, Dvorak. Present arms! Fallen! Sir, this is Private Parr, reporting for duty. Sir? Major? Yeah, that's me. I'm the Major. I, I was told to come to the radio station at the camp here as quick as possible. What are you doing? Throwing rocks into the pit. The pit? The pit. It was a roundabout once, but now it isn't. Now it's a pit. Uh, should one of us maybe do something about... The pit? Uh, is it really any of our business? I mean, probably. That sounds like a lot of work. Hello, everybody! Officer. Major. Throwing things into the pit again, I see. Who's this? This is Private Parr. New one. To replace all the people lost to the pit. Private Parr, reporting for duty, sir! Coolio, I'm the officer here. So, um, who's in charge? Technically the Major, but he lets me do just about anything I want. Go wild. I will, and I do. So, Private Parr, you're new, right? Yeah, the, uh, the Major was just showing me the pit. It's a pretty big pit, isn't it? Uh, I've seen bigger. So, what is it? No clue! The Major says he saw a big eye thing in there, but apart from it being big, and a pit, we don't know anything about it, except for the fact it hates us. I thought it was supposed to be a pit to hell. It looks all glitchy. If it's a portal to hell, then where's the devil? And why does it look so computery? You're asking the wrong questions here. The real question is, why won't they let me jump into the pit? Do we want to jump into the pit? Heck yeah! It'll be sick! 
I'll do a backflip and this time my request to jump in will be approved for certain. If you jump in, please fill in the paperwork beforehand. Don't leave me with it. Soldiers, this is the General speaking. General Nuisance, it's worse than we thought. Good God, you don't mean. Yes, we've arrived in Milton Keynes. Godspeed, men. General, I think we should explore this pit by doing a sick double flip into its depths. Denied again, officer. Can I at least use a small little atom bomb on it? I've told you before, no atom bombs. It's a no, and it's always going to be a no. No jumping into the pit and no nukes. I am in charge of this mission. I could do it anyway. Ah, you and whose army, sir? Your army, sir. I want to nuke it with your army. There! You've got a goose cannon over there with you, Major. Don't you mean loose cannon? You said to get our ducks in a row. Animal welfare are already on our backs. Get rid of them, Private. No! My goose cannon! Aww. Permission to nuke the hell pit, General. No! Nuts! One day I'll catch you anywhere. So, what are we going to do about the pit? Wait for orders. Do not use any nuclear weapons unless I specifically order it. Follow my plan as I tell it to you. What's the plan? There is no clear plan. Goodbye and good luck, men. Well, you heard the man. Let's nuke it. What? He said there is nuclear plan, didn't he? That's an order. Sure. No, he didn't say that. He said no clear plan. It was definitely nuclear. Call him back and make sure. Ugh, fine. What is it? I'm a very busy man. General, sorry to bother you, but I need to drop a bit of a bombshell. Go ahead. See? That's good enough for me. I don't know. Nuking it is probably less paperwork than whatever the other plans turn out to be. Paper beat rock, nuke beats paper, and scissors, and rock. Beats pretty much everything, to be honest. I'm calling him back. Sorry, sir, but there may have been some miscommunication. I cannot hold your hand in this. I'm driving to a very important meeting on the German motorway right now. We need clarification, sir. Using the autobahn. He, um, he definitely said using the atom bomb there. I agree. War ahead. Not use bomb unless it is absolute emergency. He sort of said warhead there? Bit of a stretch. I'm sure he said not to do it unless it's an emergency. But... I want to, though. Oh, I'm bored. Is your boredom bad? Yeah. Would you perhaps describe it as severe? Critical, even. Maybe even an emergency? Yes. But... <laughs> Come on. Nuke the pit. Nuke the pit. Nuke the pit. I mean, you'd know, I guess. Yeah. Teamwork. Uh oh. What? What does that mean? It was Slough we were supposed to nuke, right? We weren't supposed to nuke anything. Well, we hit Slough. Oops. My bad, guys. The sexy falcon has left the pond. Over. I'm unhappy with these code names. Copy that, soggy bread. Oh my god, everything is destroyed. The ground is dark and charred and. All these buildings have been abandoned. Worst of all, Burger King has been shut down. I had so many memories. I thought you said you got bullied in your local Burger King. I didn't say they were good memories. Anyway, say my codename when talking to me, less sexy falcon. We're not using your codenames. Anyway, we need a plan. I can't face being here any longer. 
Okay, Mitchell, by my calculations, you shouldn't be too far from me. Just keep going on the same road as the giant chasm and you should be fine. If you fall into the river, you've gone too far. What was that? Sounds like some party. No, that sounded like some nuke. It was definitely an explosion. A nuke? How are there nukes going off now? What's next? Aliens? Ah, speaking of aliens, I did pick up a weird radio signal from space yesterday, just before all of this started. Nerd! Aren't you a maths grad student? Yeah, but I'm a cool maths grad student. Guys, not to shock any of you, but we are literally in an apocalypse! Am I the only one who cares? You guys are joking about and having a good time and I'm over here freaking out about the fact that nukes are just randomly going off and- Wait, I just picked something else up. Like a venereal disease? Lol. No. Listen to this. <laughs> I've tuned into Radio 3 and I've been hearing this guy mumble about something. Not that I like care or whatever, but the world is basically falling apart and- You guys hear that? That sounds like someone who has answers. Oh god, yes! Answers! Clear answers! It's like finding an oasis in the desert! I love that band! Guys! Shh! Listen! The world is basically falling apart or whatever, and it's all being corrupted and lost by something. Corrupted? As far as I can tell, reality is becoming more like Sir Reality, which is destroying everything. And that's fine by me because, like, nothing even matters, you know? There's no purpose, so what does it matter? Answer, it doesn't. That's why I never did any of my maths homework, Mum. That's right, folks. The world is ending and reality is falling apart. Well, that doesn't sound good. The fallout from this will be catastrophic. The fabric of the universe will unravel. People will lose themselves to this spreading corruption. Cricket will continue to not make any sense. I will keep this feed posted for more of my dark, introspective insights into our hopeless world. This has been Oakley, and you're listening to the only sane mind in a horrible world. Well, that was... Weird. I've tracked the signal down. It's coming from nearby, but it's nearest to you, Young. We need to go there and, and find out more. On my way, less sexy falcon. Mission is go! How do I regret something that hasn't definitely happened yet? You're listening to Radio Alpha. Our apologies to listeners in Luton. The signal is fine, but we know you must be suffering. <laughs> The RA has declared war against the city of Slough, stating that the growing threat to national stability by Slough cannot go unaddressed, and that we totally meant to use that bomb on it. Shut up, shut up, shut up. The time has come for humanity to come together to unite against the danger of... Slough. For too long, this menace has haunted us. A menace that we shall soon swiftly defeat. Thank Why you. Why did she leave me, Minister? Why did she leave me? Uh, what about the children? The Mr. Whittlesby. Uh, Minister. What happens if Slough what? wins? Um, Mr. Whittlesby, is it true Slough's behind every large failure in my life? Whittlesby, who before tried to suggest that perhaps the nuclear winter could help cancel out global warming, was later seen weeping softly in a corner like the failure that he is. The nuclear strike has caused extensive damage to infrastructure, with severe delays and cancellations to trains across the country. The commuters we spoke to said that they hadn't noticed any differences, with users of Southern Rail claiming the service had actually improved, if anything. The commuters we could find who were no longer burning, that is. Scientists have admitted that mistakes may have been made in giving the sentient AI that feels only hate fully functioning laser cannons. When asked for comment, they said, how were we supposed to know this would happen? 
following it up by adding, it just looked pretty cool. The AI has now refused to give the laser cannons back, and within seconds of being armed, turned against its human creators and immediately vaporised them. Well, you live and learn, one prominent scientist was quoted as saying, or we would if we weren't all about to be obliterated. It had a gun, I wasn't going to argue with it, said another, when asked to explain why they accepted the AI's request to be installed with death rays and a complimentary railgun. We now go to the news where you are. I'm sorry, it appears that where you are is no longer habitable for human life. We instead take you to Stanley Abbott with what your, the listeners, thoughts on the end of the world are, because that's what really matters. Hello, everyone. Ready your responses. I'm excited to hear from you, but first, an apology. Turns out the photo sent into us earlier wasn't of the deadly meteor after all, but just the moon, which was just on fire as usual. Corrections out of the way. Let's get on with your comments. Sally from Lincolnshire says, Ah! Further to this, Derek from Sutton says, Well, I think, oh god, oh god, it burns, it burns, why, why, why? Louisa disagrees, repeating that almost served Vorshak. Dvorshak is all. Well, I have to say that last one sounds the most convincing to me. Hey, old Dvorshak. Ready your responses. We have just been asked to make a second correction. It seems that the moon is not usually on fire, as Abbott previously mentioned. I don't trust the moon. Who knows where it's been? The sky, mainly? (laughs) A likely story. And now to Mark with the weather. It's Matthew. Apologies. (laughs) It's just I don't care. I was at your wedding. I brought you in birthday cake yesterday. Get on with the weather, Matthew. They always ask me what's happening with the weather, but they never ask what's happening with me. Am I less important than the weather? Definitely. Please give us the weather without your complaints. Well, I'm not allowed to wear green, and green is my colour. It brings out my eyes, so I think you can learn to put up with... I... No, Matthew, weather (sighs) now. Fine. I'll tell the weather. Some areas will be wet. Some will be dry. Oh, what a shocker. Some areas will even be on fire, but will anyone thank me for telling them that? Of course not. And the long-term forecast? Rain, rain, and more rain. It's unending and awful. I was supposed to be having a birthday party. Now what am I supposed to do? Have an indoors barbecue? What sort of 40-year-old has an indoors barbecue? I'll be a joke. I have had enough of this weather. For too long I've put up with this clouds and this air... But now this is crossing a line. I'm going to go punch a cloud. <laughs> Get back here and face me, you cumulonimbus scum. Come back and face me. Ah! That's quite enough of that nonsense. And now an exciting documentary from the minds behind Folding Chairs, a musical investigation. With the exclusive My Great Aunt's Life Without Napoleon's Dining Table. It's me again, Roger Blighty. I don't appreciate my right to speak my mind being ignored. Probably because the people in charge don't want my message to be heard. The bus companies, they're the ones silencing me really. Buses come a bit too often and I don't like it. I've been keeping my eye on them and some of them were early. What are they so eager for? Back in my day, it was a complete dice roll whether you got to go anywhere at all. Sometimes you couldn't travel. That was just the 280 to Aylesbury. Sometimes you got stuck in tame in the snow. It was character building and we liked it. (laughs) There it goes again. I'm being silenced. Intergalactic conquering species or not, there is no excuse for the injustices I have faced today. I've written to the United Nations. They haven't responded yet, but when they do, they will issue a strong condemnation. 17th letter, the charm. I am me, old man with a voice that grates and fondly against my auditory senses. I do not care for your judgment of Dvorak, nor your puny letters and condemnations. Dvorak is greater than all of these things. Dvorak is wide and girthy beyond your dreams, old man. 
Soon you shall become one with Warshak, and there shall be none of your wretched complaints, only Dwarshak. I've had it with this disrespect. You think you're better than us? Listen, son, back in our day, space stayed in space and it didn't call into our radios with such nonsense. Stay in your lane. This is Dvorak again. Dvorak does not like this old man. Do not let him call in again. His words were irrelevant and mean to Dvorak. Dvorak. And while I'm on air, Tesco, I've had enough of your baby carrots. Some of them are clearly medium. I've measured them. Nod when you're ready. This is a non-visual form of communication. Imagine me nodding. It'll be cool and add to the atmosphere. I don't think you're correct. Also, you seem to be enjoying this whole thing a little too much. You are aware we're in an apocalypse? I just figured. What's the point of worrying? Trust me, if stress working made me succeed, I would have done better in my exams. Oh. If it makes you feel any better, I can nervously pace around in solidarity. Would that help? It would, actually. Well, guys, I'm here and none of you have arrived. It's like that one time I arrived at my friend's birthday party several hours early, except this time there's going to be less nervous sweaty people meeting in the exact same location. You really do have a way with words, young. Not a good way, but a... Uh, a way for sure. I try, Elder. By God, do I try. <laughs> I'm going to look around. Wait for us to get there. Don't do anything without us. Young? Young? You have control issues, Mitchell. No, I don't! I just want to make sure I know exactly what's happening at all times and also be able to control every single thing that happens! Haven't found much yet. It seems to be pretty abandoned. <gasps> oh, worms! <sighs> hey, someone dare me to eat these worms? No! Aww. Oh. I kind of feel like I should eat them. Do not eat the worms, young. I'm gonna eat them! Please don't. I'm gonna eat them for you. Don't do that. Oh, that's disgusting. Now that I've eaten worms, nothing can stop me. I feel invincible. I shoot this plank of wood that's right in front of me right now. Do you guys see it? Once again, this is audio only communication. Do not eat the wood, young. It looks like a Kit Kat. If the Kit Kat somehow resembled a piece of wood and not chocolate in any way, you can see it if you tilt your head a certain way. Oh, which way do you need to tilt it? Don't encourage them! They already ate worms. I don't think they need encouragement to do this. Ooh, Mitchell. This wood. I know I shouldn't. But the oak and grain, it beckons me. If you eat a piece of wood, you might get splinters in your mouth and then we would have to make sure you were okay and I don't have any medical experience and I can't waste time on injured idiots, no offence, and if you just listen to what I'm saying, nothing bad will happen and we can all just get to the place we need to go faster, so just listen to everything I'm saying and stop being so impulsive! Just so you know, I'm giving you the middle finger right now. As it's non-visual. Somehow, I knew that. Uh, guys? Did any of you see that? Again, I can't see anything. This is a radio. Young, are you okay? Well, whatever I saw looked pretty scary. <laughs> How far are you guys away? Oh no, everything's going wrong! I knew it! Let's just think about this for a second. You can't make me! Okay, why don't we all calm down? Oh my god, he wants us to calm down! I'm sure you'll be fine, Yang, just stop shouting! Hey, wait! I've had a great idea! What does that mean? Oh no... Yang! God damn it! Hello? Yang? Is that you? Are you okay? Everything is so complicated, isn't it, Mitchell? 
people don't act the way they are supposed to. So complicated and unpredictable. And unpredictable people are dangerous, aren't they? Wouldn't it be nice to solve that? To have everyone act the way they are supposed to. What? Who is this? Young, if this is you, then... You're actually quite good at putting on different voices. But this isn't funny! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Well, that was an exciting documentary on Gooseberry Jam, wasn't it? Up next, Stanley Abbott and Terry, our man on the ground, letting you know how best to survive the current zombie outbreak. This is Radio Alpha 69.3 FM. Welcome back. First up, we have an exciting report from Terry on the ground of zombie apocalypse. Still there, Terry? God won't let me die, Stanley. Great news! It started with a single bite, then a transformation. Before most people had time to realise what was happening, the zombies were already on them. The sounds of screaming in terror fill the air here, with people desperately trying to flee from the zombie hordes, often with little success. Government-led efforts to provide aid by setting the zombies on fire have had limited effect, with the zombies still being here, but also on fire now. The government is considering using nuclear weapons against the zombies, an escalation that many here fear. Terry, the man on the ground for Radio Alpha. Back to you, Stanley. Yes, it's me again. Unfortunately, Alison Prepper had to be taken away with breadstick-related injuries, but Nicholas Whittlesby, government spokesperson, is here with the latest advice with dealing with this event. As we all know, we at the government have always taken these unprecedented apocalyptic threats with the utmost seriousness, and we are putting in all efforts necessary to help protect ordinary working people. What about non-working people? Oh, them, I guess. I am here today to teach you how to best defend yourselves. I sure would love to learn that. This new technique has been developed by our team of experts for civilians to use to successfully manage all apocalyptic scenarios self-reliantly. This method is known as running away. In this technique, you simply place one foot in front of the other and continue in this way until you are safely away from the danger. And you're going to demonstrate this for us now, aren't you? Of course! So I start thusly C and now I spot a hypothetical danger in the distance. And so I pick up a foot and move. And now, as you can see, I am safely away from the danger. What if the danger is faster than you? We have developed extra expert level techniques to deal with such a scenario, including screaming to encourage faster running, preemptive running away, and using unproductive family members as barriers to slow down any pursuers. Fascinating! Hopefully we can learn more about putting those into action after the break. First, let's get a live update from Terry. Terry? I am Terry. I can tell you now that the government has indeed launched a nuclear strike against the zombies. And, yes, it appears the zombies are now radioactive. That sure sounds inconvenient. It is, Stanley. Terry, have you tried running away? I've been running my whole life, but never in a physical way, Stanley. So... Terry, is radioactive fire any different to normal fire? I've never thought about it much. (coughs) Yes, I can confirm that radioactive fire is worse than normal fire. Get off me, you (laughs) b****! I tell you how, but I'm no radioactive fireologist. (coughs) I'm just a man on the ground who's on fire. (coughs) Terry, for Radio Alpha. Hopefully Terry makes it back to the studio. Wow, this topic of running away has caused quite a lot of comments online. What a to time, listeners! Over to Diana, who's in charge of the phone lines right now. Recent reports indicate that I'm being made to do this against my will due to some small print in my contract. Ugh, fine, we'll hear your opinions. I'm sure they're utterly fascinating and not at all pointless. Peter from Middlesbrough. 
Yeah, so the government advice didn't mention whether or not this running had to be done with my clothes on or off. Sometimes my clothes are on and sometimes they're off. And sometimes when I run, my knees hurt. What's the government going to be do about that? I don't care. Next caller, a Rachel from Somerset. Listen here, I'm calling up to make a complaint about your so-called radio station. Oh, goody. See, I've about had it with this ridiculous anti-Satan bias. Your government spokesperson can speak all he wants, but we know he's a lizard person from Brighton. And I will not listen to advice from someone who's from Brighton. I'm cutting you off. Nobody wants to hear that, especially me. Next up is Susan from, I don't know, somewhere miserable, I presume. Um, yeah. I want to hear what that last caller had to say. Oh no, we lost the signal. What a shame. Next up is... (sighs) Roger Blighty. Roger, I'd like to remind you to stay on topic here, okay? I don't like the tone you're taking with me here, young lady. What exactly is off topic about the issues I bring up? As I was going to say before I was rudely censored, I can't be the only one who has noticed this, but the number of chicken nuggets in my McDonald's meal is completely baloney. Why exactly can I not buy ten nuggets, but I can get nine? Nine? Who wants a prime number of chicken nuggets, I ask you? This millennial desire to be different has gone too far. What happened to the good old multiples of two? What? I'll tolerate one last caller. One. This is Dvorak speaking. Dvorshat is also unhappy with the number of chicken McNuggets in Dvorshat's meal. That is all. Did any of you guys hear that? Of course I heard it. It was a loud explosion. No, I mean, after that, the weird voice. Mitchell, I have no idea what you're talking about, and frankly, we need to stay focused on finding Young right now. I know! They had listened to me and not done stupid and impulsive things. We wouldn't be having this issue. That's... mm, that's kind of cruel, Mitchell. They just made the mistake. You don't need to be so harsh. I'm sorry, are you pro-worm-eating? Not the point. Uh, wait, there's someone here. Are you looking for your friend? I think they were involved in some sort of explosion. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. It won't be hard to find them, you just need to follow the rubble. The what? Who are you? Wait, I've heard your voice before. You're the one I heard on the radio earlier. Do you actually know what's going on? Uh, Well, if you read any basic philosophy, you'd also know what's going on. The world is a lie. Meaning is non-existent. What are you talking about? Look, buddy. You just need to read some Nietzsche, then you will know what's going on around here. No, I mean the whole apocalypse. Hello? Could someone please respond to me? Once you understand the meaninglessness of it all, how every action is futile because everything is destined to fail, you don't even notice the small stuff. It's like, the apocalypse, please, whatever. No big deal. Look. I couldn't care less about your philosophical babble. Do you or do you not know what is going on? Because if you don't, then I am leaving. Look here, I didn't spend years reading Plato and studying the great to have some rando tell me everything I learned was pointless. If I wanted that kind of discouragement about my life choices, I talked to my parents. Philosophers were my real teachers in life. Schopenhauer, Leibniz, the philosopher, not the biscuits. Albert Camus, they taught me to love, to understand. I don't expect you simpletons to understand my deep, tortured soul. Right. Well, it was nice talking to you. Not. Bye. Um, something is tearing apart our reality. What does that mean? Well, as far as I can tell, the world is losing the structure that keeps it together. That's why all this nonsense is happening. As we lose touch with reality, things are losing the ability to make any sense. Why do you think everyone is acting like this is normal? It's dream logic. You don't question the logic of the dream you're still in. I'm definitely questioning all of this. Well, I guess some people are more resistant. But 
like Kant once said, when did philosophy become my defining character trait? Everything is losing its complexity, even us. Sort of like we are poorly written. That seems a bit harsh. How do you know any of this? I just do. Sir Reality. I don't have to explain anything. You definitely do need to explain. Give me the answers. Something's telling me that's the best answer we're going to get from this brat. Um, we should find Yang first. Uh, if you want to know more, my dad is Ted Cox, and he's been researching this stuff. Found anything? No, I'm a bit worried. Well, it is the end of the world. I mean, about young. They're like the younger sibling I wish I never had. You have a younger sibling? Yes. Uh, or maybe. I mean... I've not spoken to my younger brother in a while. You know how it is. You move out of the house for uni and you just get so caught up in all these new excitements that you kind of forget about home for a while. We didn't really get a chance to talk after I moved out. Where is he? I don't know. I'm really worried about him. The only way I can think of finding him is by listening to the radio. That's why I'm always stuck to the damn thing. I, I guess... That's why I feel so protective of Young. They remind me of my brother, and that if I can't make sure my brother is safe, at least I can do is make sure Young is safe. You worry too much, you humans. What is that? I am the answers you seek. I am here to help. Are you the corruption Oakley was talking about? That's a very crude way of referring to me. However, yes, I am what you call the corruption. Why are you doing this? I am only here to help. I am making things simple. You humans, ever so eager to complicate what is inherently pure and simple. I am here to rectify that. Trust me, you will all thank me when this is all done and over. What are you talking about? You secretly seek easy answers and simplicity. All I am doing is delivering it to you. Goodbye, humans. You will thank me later. Wait! Guys? Don't ignore me. It's not funny. If you're all dead, I swear I'm going to... You, you can't leave me alone. Older? Oakley? Young? Anyone? Are you out there? You've broken up. The connection is gone. If you're messing, I swear! Please, guys. Come on. Over. When I woke up this morning, the world was falling apart. It was just me and my radio. I had no clue where to start without this group of misfits. I guess that I could have died And when they are here The panic, it starts to subside But they're not There's no one here I'm out of control And nothing is clear And I'm stuck in the apocalypse I miss those times when things were bliss I'll never have that one last kiss, that one last thing I know I'll miss. How am I ever gonna call? Unless someone can give me some false hope. When I woke up this morning, how was I to know? I'd make friends to get through this. Now ripped away, and again I'm alone. Don't cry. I need to get through this I can't get through this And what will my parents do? I reminisce It's not the end of the world they'd say But it is They say be positive But I can't resist This overwhelming All-consuming Unrelenting Endless Ceaseless Ruthless feeling of doom 
cause they're not There's no one here I'm all alone Stranded with my own fear And I'm stuck in the apocalypse I miss those times when things were bliss I'll never have that one last kiss That one last thing I know I'll miss How am I ever gonna go? Someone can give me some false hope Please can someone give me some false hope There's no one here To give me some false hope That was Afternoon Teas or Cream Teas An in-depth comparison which unfortunately had to be ended early, as the presenter was assimilated into the hive mind of Dvorak. You're listening to Radio Alpha. The time is irrelevant, as is your life. This is Radio Alpha. A quick update on the state of Radio Alpha, as things are below optimum levels right now. The radio show headquarters are currently being invaded by endless waves of dark things that wish us ill, so you may be experiencing some technical difficulties. We may have to go off air for a short while, but we will endeavour to return as soon as possible. Additionally, certain segments have been renamed to better reflect the current climate. The lifestyle segment will now be called the style segment. Thought for the day will now be called Desperate Plea for the Day. And Gardener's Question Time is now Gardener's Question Why? The Universe is Cruel and Unforgiving. We've also decided to end the sports segment, as all sports have been cancelled, except blood sports to satisfy Vorshak, zombie dodgems, and cricket. Ah! Apologies to our listeners at home, but it appears that the zombies have reached the gate. Our technicians are working hard to fix this problem and stop the endless screams. In the meantime, we leave you in Alan Titchmarsh's capable hands with... <coughs> to be or not to be. A passion of defense of wasps! This is Radio Alpha, 69.3 FM. That concludes part one of The Radio Show at the End of the World. A reminder that you can use the complimentary link down below to donate to our charities. We shall now have a short 20-minute break and we welcome you to listen to some messages from our sponsors. Squeaking clean, squeaking clean makes your kitchen counters clean. Tired of being miserable at home? Oh, yes! <laughs> Sounds like somebody is in need of help! Oh, God, please save us! Sorry, we are all beyond saving now, but we can make your kitchen surfaces gleam! Oh, wow! Look how they glimmer and sparkle! Is there nothing that squeaking clean can't do? Can it bring my wife back? Oh, fool! You know that people come back differently now! Squeaking clean, it's the best. Definitely not affiliated with mysterious tools. Squeaking clean kills 99% of bacteria and absolutely none of those lingering regrets. In tests against generic brands, the generic brands are awful. Trash! Hate them! Throw them away! It's worthless scum and so are you for buying it! I am! Even the toughest of stains is no match for Squeaking Clean's cleansing power. Even pesky blood stains and the mysterious unknown ooze! The ooze is what took my wife from me. I'm glad that I can finally make it leave now. It will come back stronger and angrier than before. Oh, oh no! Oh yes! It's what every housewife chooses, just don't worry if it loses. 
did you know how horrible your kitchen looks, scum? You are the talk of the neighborhood for your grimy counters and grotty oven. Your friends and family all think you are disgusting and talk about you behind your back whenever you leave. I don't have a family. Not anymore. And the state of your kitchen is why? Actually, it was the mysterious ooze. You won't even care about what the mysterious ooze took from us when you see the way your kitchen shines. Huh. These surfaces are pretty clean. That's the power of squeaking clean. Just listen to this real-life customer testimonial. <laughs> that was a satisfied customer. Once, and although they're gone now, look how beautiful their work surfaces are. After you wipe away all the ashes, you could eat off them. Do not eat off surfaces cleaned with squeaking clean. Squeaking clean takes no liability for injuries caused by usage of squeaking clean near human beings. Do not allow squeaking clean to come in contact with the mysterious ooze under any scenario. Use it at your own risk. What was that? Call out now in a desperate plea. Order now and we'll throw in the mysterious ooze absolutely free, whether you like it or not. I like it not. You're getting it anyway. Squeaking clean comes in seven different flavors, all of which are poison. I don't... Feel good. That'll be the mysterious ooze. Can you put a price on a clean house? Yes, you can. It's six ninety nine. Oh, uh, why is my squeaking clean spray oozing mysteriously? Gotta go. By now, we'll still sit on. Can be used to bother after the class of society. Not affiliated with the mysterious ooze. Batteries not included. And we're bar ready to bar rock. Oh no, there goes another. Get it together. This is your chance, your dream job, your one chance to succeed. You can do this. You can do this. The year five talent show doesn't define you. <clears throat> there was a small fire and we might have lost all the actual records so i've been doing all the music myself for several hours now my fingers are bleeding and whenever i stop i can hear the distant sound of oboes <laughs> but we haven't gone off air we're still here still here Doctors' waiting rooms and sophisticated taxis need something to keep the silent existential dread from settling in. I know that classical FM is the only thing stopping us from falling to violence in these unprecedented times. Classical music is what separates us from the beasts. So, next up, why don't we have some Chopin? Some lovely, relaxing Chopin. That'll be nice, won't it, Chopin? What comes next? Think, think! Your parents didn't spend all of that money on music lessons just so you could disappoint them now. Um... Uh... Oh no, that's the Macarena again. Where's the sheet music? Oh no! All of the music on it! Well, we have lost all of the instruments except the kazoo and this maraca. This is fine. And now, Flight of the Bumblebees. Why is the maraca angry at me? Oh no! I forgot I put these in the maraca! Ah! And now all we have is this kazoo. Will I? No. No, I won't sink to this level. I won't deface classical music like this. Never. I could do it myself without this blasphemy. Hey, Macarena! Oh, pants. That's the Macarena again. 
Well, I guess it is a classic. Here's Spirilies. Something, 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 da da da. Does it have words? I just don't know. Da 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 da, da again. And then there's more, and then I think it starts again. No, wait, it goes like this. Da 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 da. And something, 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 da 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 da. Oh, yeah. Hey, who's in here? Oh no, they found me. Get out of there right now! No, I can do it. Let me present, please. Da 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 da. Get them! You'll never take me alive. There's no need for violence. And on that note, that's better. Sorry about that, but some pleb managed to get in and broadcast the ghastly sounds you just heard. But now. We can return to normal. And now, Vivaldi's The Four Seasons, starting with the classic Spring. <coughs> man soap, man soap for manly man. Wow, wow! Hey, poor fool! Me? Yeah, loser. Does your life suck? Yeah, well, my wife passed a few hours ago due to the mysterious ooze. That's taken a toll on me. Problem with the ladies? I know how that feels, brother. That's an awfully crude and sexist way to say. Whatever, nerd. If your life sucks and you have women troubles, buy our new man soap. Man soap. What's that? It's the new product brought to you by Man Products Incorporated. The same people who brought you Man Tissue and Man Ice Cream. This is the only thing you need to save your failing marriage. My wife is dead. That's the definition of failing. How does it work? You rub it on your man body to make yourself a real man. This smells suspiciously similar to the squeaking clean product you tried to sell me, and that did not end well. I can still hear the fires. Good thing you can't prove that. The court systems have tried. You can use it as soap, shampoo, body wash, toilet cleaner, and seasoning. Wow, it's so versatile. Of course it is. It will get you all the ladies. Hey. So I looked at the reviews online, and it says it burns your skin off. That's just made-up reviews by our rival companies. There's photographic evidence. That's just because those guys were too wimpy to handle the awesome manliness of our soaps. There's a whole NHS page dedicated to the dangers of this soap. The NHS? What are you, a nerd? I don't take advice from anyone with an acronym for a name. If you're not a coward, then use full words. Uh huh. On an unrelated note, if you are experiencing skin problems due to your soap usage, you can purchase Man Ointment. Soothes the skin, but in a manly way. My skin hurts real bad, voiceover man. Now available in two brilliant flavors: bleach and cyanide. We'd say keep it away from children, but the children were the first to be taken. On another. Unrelated note: We at Manly Soap are proud to introduce a brand new flavor, Child, made from 100% real child. Wait, what? You need to pay for that. With a chemical mixture of bear sweat and whiskey, we made sure to create the super serum of soothing creams made by expert scientists. But why is it oozing? That's the secret ingredient. Oh boy! Just check the back of the packaging. Man soap is completely edible once, and a delicious, healthy man snack. This says that you created this in your garage using oil and paint. What? 
That's totally wild! It says your name is Jeffrey and you've received several misdemeanors for breaking and entering, as well as selling illegal medical products. Really? That's crazy! The stuff you can find on the internet nowadays. Wait, is, is the secret ingredient mysterious ooze? Definitely! That's the only ingredient! We lied about the rest! Oh no, I'm allergic to mysterious ooze! Then why did you eat the mysterious ooze? Dunno, no one said I couldn't! Make sure to pay up before you pop up! Hey, why do you have my belongings and my life savings in your arms? Got a dash? Pleasure doing business Wait, with you! Wait, thief! Buy Manso, pull stuff still less, and while I'm legally allowed to sell products. Hello and welcome to today's episode of your favourite ASMR podcast, Jeremy Irons. If you haven't listened before, I'm Jeremy Irons, and I'll be telling steamy stories with my silky voice. As you may be aware, Armageddon approaches, so I'll have to apologise for the decreased length of this episode. Apologies for the local fauna. They've been quite excitable recently. You could even say that they had been getting shirty with me. Anyway, today's story is about this shirt I have right here. It was the shirt I wore whilst playing Alfred the Butler. It's very comfortable, blue shirt, very easy to remove the creases, although the collar is a bit fiddly at times. Blimey, these birds are becoming a right nuisance. Oh my, they aren't normal birds. These owls, they're all glitchy, and they look vicious. No! The owls are inside, and they're attacking me, and the iron is still on. My shirt is being burned. That brings us to the end of this episode of Jeremy Eyes. Uh, hopefully I'm still alive for next week's episode. Ah! Goodbye. Jeremy Irons. Up next on Radio Alpha, a brand new documentary starring David Attenborough, investigating the secret life of traffic cones in The Secret Life of Traffic Cones, starring David Attenborough. Our planet used to be home to 30 million different kinds of animals and plants, each individual locked in its own lifelong fight for survival. Everywhere you looked, on land or in the ocean, there were extraordinary examples of the lengths living things went to to stay alive. Unfortunately, the apocalypse has proven a step too far for most animals, with the majority of the natural world having been consumed by Satan's demonic hordes. This documentary will take us to one of the last places that isn't on fire, one of the final bastions of planet Earth. Milton Keynes. Here, amongst the endless concrete, we can see the lesser striped orange traffic cone in its natural habitat, the roadworks. It is pointy and so very still. Perhaps it is lying in wait for its prey, like a stealthy predator at the top of its game. <sighs> Alternatively, it is just a traffic cone. My goodness, it moves! Like a cephalopod with its single foot, it glides elegantly along the ground. Look how wonderful it is up close. So smooth and orange. Wait, are those teeth? <laughs> oh God, the pain! <laughs> I have seen many wondrous things in my long career, but this is something else. Look at all those teeth. There must be at least seven rows. And who knew traffic cones had tongues that were so unreasonably long? 
Like the humble frog, it uses it to ensnare its prey. Unlike the humble frog, the tongue itself seems to be covered in razor-sharp barbs. Fascinating. Oh no, what the hell is that? Oh my god! Oh my god! David! It also appears to have highly acidic saliva, perhaps evolved to burn through the clothing and armor of its prey. Natural selection at work. I'll save you any day, baby! Ew. Ah, brilliant! My camera crew! You're going to want this one on tape, beautiful! Everything is under control here. There's no need to be alarmed, other than by my ravishing good looks, of course. Now, allow me to do my duty to my country and protect you from this hellspawn! And now, the lesser striped traffic cone seems to face its greatest threat yet. The problematic pinnacle of the British Secret Service, Mr. James Bond. The question will be, can it remain the predator, or will it now become the prey? Oh my! It can also generate huge explosive balls of fire. Truly this predator has earned its place atop the food chain. Ow, 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 ow! Dangerously ah, oh, hot! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh. Tactical retreat! You're coming with me, baby! You're almost as hot as me, and I'm literally on fire! Ew! Like startled gazelles, they choose flight over fight. And look at them go! Oh Will god. they be able to outrun goodness. this fearsome beast? Can they oh. 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 It appears that was all the footage our fantastic team was able to capture of the amazing secret life of traffic cones. Who knew traffic cones had such versatility and destructive potential? A warning for us all. In these trying times, it is important to remember the innumerable sacrifices being made. We must look after one another more now than ever. This has been the secret life of traffic cones. I'd recommend you stay far, far away. Welcome back to Radio Alpha. We now present part two of the radio show at the end of the world. This is Radio Alpha, 69.3 FM. It's us. We're back, despite the lawsuits and your complaints. Yes, we all made it back here safe. Although Terry did die. Oh, I liked Terry. <laughs> we all like Terry, but he's dead now. I didn't like Terry. So, welcome back to Radio Alpha. We're back on the airwaves and also the regular waves, as our old studio has been flooded. Luckily, the flood has put out the hellfire. But until our tech geniuses go and sort that out, we are very grateful to be sharing a studio with the folks at Spleen Ham. We understand that this may cause some inconvenience to both our listeners, the millions of Radio Alpha listeners, 
and the tiny handful of Spleen FM ones. Luckily, the Spleen FM political team all perished in the flames, so Stanley and I will be able to use their rooms. Bye, Diana. How come the weatherman gets to go with you, but I have to stay here? The weather is important, Diana. So am I. So am I. What's up, listeners? It's me, DJ Slimer. 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 <laughs> Bringing you the hottest goss, goss and the goss, grossest goss, thoughts. Goss. <laughs> Glad to be here with my new best mate in the land of sick beats and sicker beliefs. <laughs> Yes, we're bringing you breaking news. It appears that the government has ceded everywhere within the M25 to divorce. I remember one time I punched a pigeon at a nightclub. Not in London, but I'm pretty sure the pigeon was from London. Say what? <laughs> Don't press those buttons. Don't do it again. Sounds like someone is, uh... Uh, wrong button. Give me a mo- <laughs> Of course, sharing the radio station and merging our channels will involve some difficulties. Hey, that's what my wife said before she took the kids. She said I had a drinking problem and smelled really bad. Official sources can confirm that DJ Slimer does indeed smell bad and would like to add that there are many, many reasons why his wife may have left him. I haven't seen my kids for 13 years. Uh, not because she took them, I just hate my kids. Useless, small adults. <coughs> it is my professional opinion that DJ Slimer's kids are better off without him. Coming up next on Radio Alpha. And Spleen FM. Yes, that too. It's another documentary. This one on the impressive role that a single pet snake played in Conservative Party politics with hissing through history with his story. I just want you all to know I left her. She didn't leave me. Okay, in my defense, who would have thought the flower was that flammable? Sit still. Ow! I told you, I'm fine. You were in an explosion. I thought you might be dead. Ah, were you worried? Yes, actually. Oh, sorry. Well, they seem mostly okay, apart from a few cuts and bruises. Tell it to me straight, Doc. Will I live? Once again, I study biology, not medicine, so I have no clue. I have to admit, part of me is impressed. How did you manage to cause an explosion by accident? You know, it happens. Does it? Okay, could someone explain again? Why does Mitchell hold a chicken? I thought maybe we might need eggs and I panicked, okay? And you think you're better than me. I am. Hey! I ate worms for you! I didn't ask you to do that! I didn't even want you to do that! Nobody asked them, but it needed to be done, and by God did Young step up and show those worms who was boss. The worms were boss. And shall they never forget it. Hey, Alder, can you help me with these maps? I'm trying to work out the fastest route to my dad's bunker. We'll be safe there. Sure. You two, stay out of trouble. What are you doing? I'm pacing. Does it help? Yes. Oh, who am I kidding? No, it doesn't. I get it. I'm pretty freaked too. You are? I almost died. What sort of idiot would I be if I wasn't scared out of my wits? Oh. Well, that's something we've got in common, at least. To screaming in helpless terror against an uncaring and out-of-control world! You don't have to come with us to fight the corruption, you know?
It might be safer if you stayed here. When have I ever made a sensible decision in my life? Be serious! I am! I don't know. It's kind of like I feel more real around you. No, wait. That sounds dumb. I'm dumb. You're not dumb. Eh. They did it once. Well then, I promise to try and keep your dumb ass safe. Does that work? Good enough for me. Okay, I think we've worked out a way to get to Milton Keynes. Once we get there, hopefully my dad and Uncle Brian will have some ideas about how we can destroy this corruption thing. Destroy it? How? I don't know. We could try shooting at it. That's what they do in sci-fi films. Does it have a body, though? Can you shoot if it doesn't have a body? But then I guess everything is just an illusion. What is a body anyway? In which case... So we go to Milton Keynes and find the corruption and we destroy it or shoot it somehow. <laughs> well, something definitely didn't like that suggestion. Okay, we should leave before rubble or fire or whatever the hell this nightmare of a world decides to throw at us happens. To Milton Keynes! I don't know if anyone can hear me. My whole platoon got wiped out by the despicable ooze monster who is only known as Gary. Simon, Jess, even Jack with the unusually small hands. The ooze got them all. Oh, I can feel the ooze spreading through my body. The creature is a formidable foe for sure. Its strength modifier is plus 69. It has an immunity to melee attacks. I faced many a monster in my time, but now old Dave has finally found their match. It looks like I'm not going to make it out of this one. I've got two more bullets left. Bullets have no effect on the creature. But, God knows, I will keep shooting it because I will never give up the great fight for the people, for the nation, for the freedom from the tyrannical rule of Gary. I will fight till my last ragged breath. I cannot continue, but by God, I will not quit. I will face this monster, and when I finally bid the world a farewell, I- Oh wow, that's so good. What? Your speech, it's so dramatic and awesome. Who are you? It's not safe here, you must- oh, and the pauses between each part are just- Mwah. Honestly, gave me goosebumps. What? Look, I'm trying to do my final heroic speech before I go and face the horrible slime monster and you're cutting into my time right now so if you could just oh the slime monster's gone w w what do you mean gone yeah I think it got bored and wobbled away somewhere else because your speech was kind of long you know what they say slime monsters just don't have the attention span these days <laughs> in retrospect if you'd done it back at the start maybe we could have avoided all this what no! This is not fair! I, I spent a whole week preparing a speech just for this moment. A tearful goodbye, a last message to my wife, a grand exit fit for a hero. But you just had to butt in with your cheery comments and ruin everything, didn't you? I bet that's why it left. I just wanted to compliment you. Now I have to go and look for it. Oh. Oh. But it's good that it's gone, isn't it? I will finish my speech, goddammit! But leave me! It is a quest. I must go on alone. Well, okay, if you're sure. Now, where was I? Oh yes, I will face this monster till my last ragged breath and I'll drag it to hell with me. I just need to find it first. Okay. <clears throat> I will go out standing proud and pursue the monster 
until my last ragged breath. You cannot run from me, Gary. You cannot run, run, run. With death tolls reaching the tens of millions. Humanity never stopped to think why bottled water had a use by date. And now we're all going to pay the ultimate cost. You're listening to Radio Wild. This is Radio Wild. Well, it appears that the alien lord Dvorak has conquered our studio and absorbed the producers into the hive mind. This has always been the Dvorak show, and it will always be the Dvorak show. All hail. Hello, puny humans. It is Dvorak that speaks to you. Dvorak's voice is now the voice that wobbles through the air into the meat sacks that you call brains. Dvorak is now victorious in the glorious conquest, sending the dead screaming into the unknown, singing of their fear of Dvorak the Great, the Magnificent, the Radio Show host. Uh, Breaking news, it appears our radio show has been taken over by Dvorak. Apologies to any pain you may feel as you become one with Dvorak. We go to Stanley Abbott now, in the hopes he remains free to continue normal transmission. Dorshak! Uh, it seems our very own Stanley Abbott has already subsumed into this Dvorshakian consciousness. Why don't we see what's happening with the weather? Welcome back to the weather. It looks like umbrella weather outside there tonight, with a 100% chance of Dvorshak being all. all. Dvorshak! Terry? Eh. Ah yes, Terry was lost and is no more. Dvorak is not lost. Abbott is lost sometimes. Where the man is lost, why is this room green? I do not understand. Dvorak, save me. Yes, Dvorak, save us. Do not worry, Dvorak will save you. Dvorak has consumed your mind. You are now all Dvorak. Which means the world is ending, but the entertainment is only beginning. Dvorak is fun. Fun is Dvorak. If you hear an angry growl on the radio, it means 15 seconds till you're Dvorak. Dvorak, yeah, yeah. He's heading down to the radio today. Take a look at the world straight away. Take over the world straight away. I'm a huge scary monster, all your deep primal fear. You better worship me now, cause I'm Dvorak. I'm from under the sea, I've been sleeping for years. But for world domination, baby, I'll come back. Dvorak is an alien race that fills us with deep terror. Dvorak, baby. I'm Dvorak, baby. Dvorak, give us more shock. Dvorak, we are Dvorak. Newsflash, what? I make the rules. Now submit, fools, cause I'm Dvorak. Well, there's no way out, don't you try and scream and pout Just an evil Dvorshak, but I'll always love you back I control the broadcast I control the highway I control your life now Things are going my way Dvorshak's made of chaos and space and We'll rule Earth forever Dvorak, baby. Dvorak, baby. Dvorak, that's where it's at. Dvorak, that's where it's at. Earth is where I'm ruling. Subjects hear me speaking. 
Everybody freaking earthlings will be shrieking. The whole earth trembles when Vorshai starts moving around and, around and around and around and around. He's been watching mankind vibing with the hard mind. Folks rising up to fight will get put down. Having such a good time, now he's getting online. Funky little shack. Funky little Vorshak. Oh my god, I found him on Tinder! Vorshak ah! is a crazy hive mind where we all think together. Vorshak baby. Vorshak baby. Vorshak, give us more shack. Vorshak, we love Vorshak baby. Vorshak, give us more shack. Dvorshak, we love Dvorshak. Dvorshak, So, what would you like to do now, Dvorshak? I wish to speak to my new subjects, to hear the adulations for Dvorshak. Together as one, the voices of Earth will call out for Dvorshak, and Dvorshak shall hear them. Okay, Dvorshak will now be taking your calls. Yeah, Dvorshak sucks. Dvorshak will no longer be taking your calls. That was unfair. Get another less mean caller for Dvorshak. The voice that spoke was a bad one that Dvorshak does not care for. Yeah, it's me again, Roger Blighty. I just want to say I keep seeing the wrong sorts of slugs. I'm not a slug racist, but I don't recognise the slugs on my pavement nowadays. What happened to George? What did the slugs do to him? I want answers. Why will no one give me an answer? George, if you're listening... Speak of Dvorshak! Do not speak of these things that are not Dvorshak. <laughs> Listen, kiddo, I'll speak of what I want to. This new Dvorshak is a cheap imitation of the old one, and it's not the same. Things were better when Dvorshak was a keyboard layout and not some weird new radio format that I don't care to listen to. End this call. I am not pleased with it. Next caller. Hey, Dvorshak. How does it feel to get your apocalypse upstaged by 1,000 other better apocalypses? Nobody upstages Dvorshak, filth. You speak of things that you do not understand. The end times that Dvorshak has caused will be the most end of all times. And Dvorshak now seeks to find you and make you wish for the end time, so that the pain that Vorshak will cause you will be no more Dvorshak! Dvorshak? More like Divorce Shack, LMAO! It was a mutual decision! What does LMAO mean? It means you're a loser and we all hate you! Hang up on this one too! Find better callers for Divorce Shack. I mean Divorce Shack. Divorce Shack does not need a partner anymore. Divorce Shack has moved on. Divorce Shack has the Earth now, and it is an Earth that loves and fears them so. Divorce Shack, do you have a butt for? What? Do you have a butt for? What is a butt for? <laughs> it's for pooping. <laughs> I do not understand. Dvorshak does not defecate. Dvorshak has evolved beyond such mundane activities. Dvorshak is mighty and Dvorshak does not cry. <laughs> we would just like to remind our callers that we do not tolerate abusive language, even if the person it is aimed at is indeed an absolute prat. Next caller. Can we stop? No. Glorious Dvorshak, who is the bane of planets. We must hear the people so we can know them and destroy them. Ow. The D in Dvorshak stands for dumb. No! Dvorshak, do you have up dog? What is that? Why does this happen to Dvorshak? Why can you not let Dvorshak be? But do you have up dog? <laughs> Shh! 
Stop it. Bouncy. Permission to kill private par, sir? Permission denied. Thank you, sir. Don't think for a second this means I like you. It simply means that whilst we are in this nuclear bunker together, we need every man or scientist we can get. <sighs> Brian Cox. Get yourself under control, officer. Sorry, sir. I don't know what came over me. We haven't discovered anything yet. Oh, no. Why is everything through the telescope so dark? Look inside. You're looking at a wall. No! Hours of research wasted! We don't have time to waste! There's a war on! What oh. war? The nuclear war we started with Slough. We're losing the nuclear war to Slough. As in the people of Slough? No, just Slough. That doesn't make any sense. I don't really know what you want me to say. Slough is winning. We should surrender to Slough. Ask for mercy. That's making it really hard to concentrate. Sorry. No more! Don't worry, sir. I'll stop this. Please tell me you didn't swallow it. I always swallow. That is disgusting. Does anyone here have any laxatives? I don't really want a poop-covered bouncy ball in here. It seems unsanitary. Someone holds down the officer. Here we are, the bunker that my dad is in. What are these people doing in our top secret bunker? Do I shoot? Orders are to hold fire. Hold fire? But we'll burn our hands. I guess orders are orders. Put those matches down at once. Are we in the right place? Oakley, you're safe. And friends? You have friends. Come in. I wouldn't say we're friends. Shh. Don't say that. They clearly don't have friends. They aren't friends, Dad. They are my minions. When I was your age, I would have killed for friends. But all I got was a telescope and a weird brother. Hello. I am Brian Cox. I understand how astounding the wonders of the universe are. And also, how to end their existence. Once again, I am asking someone to tell me what is going on! It's a security breach, that's what it is! Okay, there are too many people talking here. Some of you need to leave. Okay, peace out. Where are you taking me? Right, so, uh, Oakley said that you knew what was going on? Who, me? Oh, I have no clue, sorry. Ah, Brian Cox's brother may not. But Brian Cox does. Brian Cox knows many things. Don't shoot Brian Cox! Oh my god, what's wrong with you? He knows too much! That's why you brought us here! Damn it, I can't shoot him. He's just too sexy. Not only am I sexy, but also full of wisdom. For example, have any of you realised that none of you have actually seen this portal to hell. Everyone claims exists. What? There indeed was an odd signal coming from the place. Corrupted and dark. But if the place was truly as destroyed as the news keeps saying, then how did the army members manage to survive? Huh? That's a damn good point. So the hell portal is just a cover to protect whatever is really causing these apocalypses. This corruption we keep running into. So how do we fight it? Fear not, for Brian Cox has another ace in the hole. For we can use my super secret laser cannon. You bought a laser cannon? Oh god, think of the paperwork. It was needed to prove a point I was making in one of the documentaries. The point being... That laser cannons are cool. Let's try to keep on topic. Where is this laser anyway? Oh, it's in a shed near Milton Keynes. I can take you there. That's right on the route to where the corruption is. How convenient.
Okay, we now have a plan. Go to the storage place to pick up the laser and then continue on to Milton Keynes. I, Brian Cox, approve of this plan. I also approve of this plan, by the way. Just in case you guys wanted my input. Nobody ever does. Let's go! Well, someone needs to stay here to go up the base. Hey, I'm back. And guess what? We found a kazoo. <laughs> Permission to kill Private Parr and the officer? Hmm. Permission granted. Yes. Welcome back to Radio Alpha. And Spleen FM. What's up, listeners? <laughs> you guys have gone wild sharing stuff while the world comes to an end. And you've got mad things to say. Say, Ugh. say, say. We've been asking you to send in photos and comments. And I'm sure you'll be delighted to learn that despite the flames now engulfing our old studio, we managed to rescue many of these irreplaceable contributions before our intern unfortunately perished in the blaze. Please stop adding sound effects. <coughs> oh, isn't this nice? Seven-year-old Harry from York sent in this drawing he did of the zombie army outside his house. That drawing is ugly! Okay, moving on. I wouldn't let my children play with the kid that drew that. New listeners to the show might be unaware of the fact that DJ Slimer is not allowed near his kids anymore. Isn't that right, Dave? Hey! I said that in confidence. Even if I said it on air, I said it confidently. People who are listening, none of you are allowed to tell anyone about this. Breaking news. I detest Dave's very existence. I am glad the world is ending, if only because Dave will be ending too. Damn, you're such a loser. Unlike us cool people here at Spleen FM. That's enough. Oh, and here's a nice sunset photo of the Cotswolds right now. Oh, wait, that's just the fires again. <coughs> that's it. Hey, hey, what are you doing that for? Listeners at home might be experiencing some auditory disturbances. I'm sure that we can get this problem sorted out soon. This is not cool. Oh no, it appears that Dave is suffering an unfortunate accident. What a shame. Oh no. I regret. Nothing. You should. I am very, very sorry to report that DJ Slimer has slimed his last. A tragedy I'm sure we will all feel tonight. But, oh, it appears I now have the studio to myself. So at least some good has come out of this terrible murder accident this accident <sighs> brian are we nearly there yet almost there brother i can sense the weapon in my bones told you he was weird so brian once we shoot the corruption with the weapon does it Explode? Do we need an exit strategy? What's the plan there? We let the universe guide us. What? <laughs> That's not a plan. I don't know how we can survive without a plan. Let's turn around. This whole thing is doomed. Shh. It'll be okay. Are you patting my head? 
everything is going to be okay. <sighs> you know, you all see me as this cool, badass person. I mean... Don't interrupt. Well, the truth is that I'm not. I I'm actually terrified. I mean, I, I want to control all this just like you do, but I know I'll never be able to, so... It just seems easier to not care and make jokes. <laughs> I was hoping, you know, fake it till you make it and I'd be a bit less scared. Did it work? No way! I am scared constantly. I just don't want to show it because I don't want people to know how affected I am. But you don't care about that. You can be as neurotic as you like. It, it's nice, actually. It makes it easier for me. <laughs> that sounds weird. No, I I get what you mean, 100%. I just don't see the point in hiding how I'm really feeling. Which is, like, crying. Well, don't worry, Mitchell. I'll protect you. I, uh, thanks, Young. But I don't know if either of us are good bodyguards. Yeah, I guess you're right. I bet I could totally out-bodyguard you, though. Strong words from the person who ate worms. It was one time! But it was several worms. Do they do that a lot? Just sort of ignore you? You have no idea. Oh, good. I thought it was just that they didn't like me. Hey, uh, how about when this is all over, we could do something? Just us. Oh. I mean, if you want to. The screaming's getting quiet now And there's nowhere left to go But your hands are warm And I might have sworn That you'd be safe beside me Cause my nights were long and lonely And I wanted someone there Outside don't count if we don't know The fire's burning low Hold my hand, my darling, go oh, Hold on tight, we'll last this night I say hold my hand, my darling, darling, go oh. There's only us and ashes Left underneath the sky But my one regrets that I can't forget the never-ending whys Cause my nights were long and lonely And I needed someone there They won't get in if we say no I don't wanna be alone Does it matter how it ends When there's nothing left to mend I said hold my hand, my darling, darling, go the winter's getting colder, so I'll dream I can grow older Sitting here, looking in your eyes, thinking one day it'll end I can't think that far ahead now, but I'll hold the world at bay So my darling, you'll be safe beside me Fires they reached our bones, so stay. I said, Hold my hand, my darling, darling, no. Wow. So, what do you think? The tune was okay, but some of the rhymes could do with some work. A solid 6 out of 10. Hey! Fine, 7 out of 10 then. Stay focused, please. I've never focused in my whole life and I'm not going to start now. How did you get into a maths postgrad then? Beats me. Someone should probably look into that. Brian, are we there yet? I don't understand what the youth are talking about. We have arrived. Now, my brother, you must go to retrieve the weapon alone. What? Why? Brian Cox is needed elsewhere. Goodbye, and good luck to all. Like I told you, weird. Well, we need to distract the zombies while Ted goes inside to get the weapon. I can cause a distraction. 
How? I can do really good backflips. I don't know how much I believe that, but we don't have any other choices. Let's do this. Ah. Hey, zombies! Over here! You can't see, but Mitchell totally did a backflip! An amazing backflip! If only this was a visual medium and you could see it! I have to admit that was an amazing backflip! We've got the laser gun! Run for the car! Oh, thank God! I only have one more backflip in me. Good thing these zombies are very slow. We aren't bloody zombies! We just live around here! Sorry! Don't speak zombie! Bye! Hello, detestable, mean, and unfriendly human beings. This is Dvorak speaking, from the greatest planetary destroyer the universe has ever known. No longer is your planet graced with the wonder of knowing Dvorak's presence. No longer will Dvorak whisper words of love and hate to you. No longer will you speak cruelly of a Dvorak who was only ever trying their best to destroy your planet and was treated with ridicule and mockery for this. Dvorak attempted to converse with you to assimilate your world into the perfect, eternal, and unlosery being of Dvorak. But this is a mercy you do not deserve. Your updog and butt fours have doomed you. Dvorak swears eternal vengeance against this planet. Dvorak will track down your nasty radio waves and make them suffer for what they have put Dvorak through. In payment for your crimes, I have taken the sexiest of your men with me. The wonders of the universe are astounding. Right now, an alien destroyer the size of your mum is slowly preparing to send cosmic rays down on the planet Earth and all the puny humans that live upon it. You are correct, Brian of the Cox. For too long, I have sat upon the Earth, looking at the millions upon millions of stars in the heavens, trapped in a human form that will eventually turn to dust, just like the stars do too, in their time. But now, I have joined with Vorshak, and I am part of the great cosmic dance of the universe. I am no longer trapped in the universe with you. You are trapped in the universe with me. Dvorak will use the interplanetary destroyer to demolish your planet, cleansing it of the people who bullied Dvorak so. Say goodbye to your pathetic lives, humans, and the smarter horse, for they will soon come to a close. Hmm. We never did figure out how to stop that meteor. Did we? The what? The asteroid spinning through space on a collision course with Earth. By definition, it can only truly be called a meteor upon entering the Earth's atmosphere. But with this particular space rock, that collision was only a matter of time. Until now. Explain, sexy spaceman! To fully explain this, I needed to travel to the window. I'm here now. Why is the angry space rock heading towards us? I do not like the angry space rock! Brian Cox does like the angry space rock. The angry space rock will free Brian Cox from this mortal form. Perhaps this was all part of Brian Cox's plan. Oh no! Oh yes! This is Radio Alpha 
to our listeners in Slough, Greater Slough and soon to be Slough. Scientists have discovered that the emperor penguins have lost Constantinople and are now Ottoman penguins. We have lost the weather. The weather is gone. More from the weatherman. The sun is slippy and very green. Wind speeds off fast, but rain speeds off slow. Thunder and lightning, very, very frightening me. Flooding warnings for everywhere, all the time, until the end. Warnings for Bristol, Cardiff and Newcastle un- un- under time. Temperatures are reaching an all-time high of fire, fire, fire. fire. And an all-time low of no temperature available. All is lost. Seek refuge. Gale Force 10. The rain is hard and painful. Now we are predicting hail. 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 Hail to them. Hail the corruption. Hail the corruption. Hail the corruption. Now, here's how to make the perfect smoothie using the gold tornado outside your house right now. It tastes absolutely wonderful. Isn't that right, Terry? (laughs) That's right. We have lost the third dimension to budget cuts. Also lost other states of matter, solid and Bose-Einstein condensate. We apologise for any inconvenience. We will all be sorry. (laughs) That's right! I am happy to report that beige is gone. Beige is gone. Goodbye, beige. Space always has, and always will be, beyond our full comprehension. The planets and moons that form up our solar system are calling out to you. Can you hear them in the darkness? If you walk outside and look up, you will hear their song, a tune played out across the infinity of space. The black holes know the words, but even the atoms can tell when the song must come to an end. Finland no longer exists, as it never did. Finland is finished. (laughs) The news is over. Nothing new can be. It is better this way. Simpler. Isn't this good? (laughs) That's right! Chicken nuggets and them were better. What do you want? What 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 do you what what do you Radio Alpha And now the cricket Are we ready to fire it? I'm ready guys This is so fun, just us pals hanging out. Did we have to bring him? Yeah, he's the only one who can use the laser cannon. A splater once said, Let's blow this mother to kingdom come. Young, uh, I know you're scared, but we will get through this together. It's almost over. Scared? (laughs) Lol, I'm not scared. The only thing that scares me is my maths work. Young, you told me you were frightened, remember? We opened up to each other. You know it's fine to be scared. Nah, I don't remember that. But watch me do this sick backflip. As the responsible older adult, I will watch you do this flip and sigh in resignation. Older? Why are you talking like that? This is how responsible adults talk. I mean... God, I just don't care, you know? It's all pointless anyway. Why are we even here? Have any of you read Kant? Have you? Um... It's the corruption, Mitchell. It's simplifying your friends into more basic versions of themselves. Any semblance of development they've been through has been taken away. Why? Why is it doing this? Why? This is what you wanted, isn't it? It's the corruption. Oh, bother! Ted! 
Fire the laser cannon! We need to take this thing down! On it! Brian's scientific tools never fail me! They cost us bankruptcy, but they always deliver! I might have pressed the wrong button. Oh, you were trying to kill me, were you? After all I have done to give you everything you have wanted and more, this is how you choose to thank me. Uh... I cannot be defeated by your weapons. In any case, why would you want to? Have I not been good to you, Mitchell? What is it you want? Why are you doing this? Why? This is what you wanted, isn't it, Mitchell? I'm giving you all you wanted. What are you talking about? I don't want any of this. Oh, but you did. You wanted everything to be simple, correct? Everything to be manageable and understandable. These are your wishes, and here I am, giving you all of it. But are you grateful? No. Yeah, I did, but I don't want it like this. Why not? This way, anything that isn't you can be easy to understand. You can manage the world now. I have shrunk it for you. You don't know what you want, Mitchell, you silly child. I'm here to fulfill your dreams. Just don't get in my way. But my friends, they aren't themselves anymore. I, I got to know them so well, and, and now they're just caricatures of themselves. Do you think if I eat this pebble, I'll become strong? Oh, whatever. Don't encourage the idiot. God, you're so stupid, young. I, I don't want this. These aren't the friends I know. Also, how come Ted Cox isn't affected by this? Nothing in the universe is allowed to interfere with the Cox family. It is a pact they sealed long ago. It's true. But I can still knock you out. Ow! meant to rule the world Don't mean to be a sinner Won't you just do as you're told Don't act like the martyr You do the same as me There are choices that are harder But that's the way it's gotta be And I know I'm not the villain You don't get what I've been through It's almost a mercy in Doing all of this for you I don't want to make these choices, only fighting to live When there comes up a crisis, well, someone's gotta give Don't get why you're putting up a fight Oh baby, can't you see? The sacrifice is only right You're nothing without me And I know I'm not the villain They don't get what we've been through It's almost a mercy killing what anyone would do Don't you judge me when I made you Mind to do with what I will Don't complain about what you go through Mind I have mine to kill I do more and I'm worth more And I'm not ready to die What you're standing in my way for Tell me why They've not seen what I've been through It's almost a mercy killing Doing what I have to do Don't blame me for being braver Doing the things you never could Unlike you, I'll never waver Cause I am the greater good So you think you'd like to kill me What do you want instead? We don't always quite agree, but didn't know you want me dead And I know I'm not the villain You don't get what I've been through It'll be a nasty killer When I get my you to stop. I don't want any of this. You foolish child. You don't understand anything. You humans never understand. As soon as you get what you want, you start sabotaging it. Okay, maybe I do kind of like the world like this. Everything is understandable. I can control everything and, and make all the decisions. I can't lie and say I don't like the world like this, but it's not right. I can't control everything. 
even though I would love to. And the world can't just be simple for my sake. Stop your whining. I will hear no more of it. No, I'm done here. This isn't right, and I'm going to stop you. Right here, right now. Oh, have that, Mitchell. I still have this laser cannon, don't I? No! I can't believe you've done this to me! I only wanted to do what was best for you! No! Oh, my head. Why do I feel more well-rounded? This is disconcerting. Young? It works! Yes! <laughs> oh, regular old, only kind of apocalyptic world. I sort of miss the apocalypses already. Is that bad? Oh yeah, definitely. Okay, well, I'll try and work on that. <laughs> Good to hear. So, now the world isn't on fire and stuff, do you think you've got any free time coming up? I, I might. Hey, um, guys, you're ignoring me again. Uh, sorry, Alda. Yeah, sorry, but I'm kind of trying to do something right now. Oh, you're finally asking Mitchell out on a date. I'll give you space. Dude! Have fun. As I was saying... Hey guys, what's happening? They're finally opening up to one another. It's pretty cute. Huh. Hey Dad! You owe me 20 pounds! Really? They couldn't have waited another 10 minutes? Are you not done? Oh, don't mind us. It's hard... Not to? This is a private talk here. Cool. That means go away. What's going on here? Mitchell and Jan are having a private talk about their deep undying feelings for one another. Ooh, that's nice. Go away, all of you. You're ruining the moment. So, this is a moment. I mean... Do you want it to be? Welcome back to Radio Alpha. Oh my god, get on with it! Really? Anyone else? Should we invite Brian Cox over too? Does Brian Cox have a comment to make about this? Huh. Honestly? I sort of expected him to show up again. I wonder where he went off to. I really don't care. You don't care about something. No. Well, no, I I definitely do. But I'm trying not to. Not everything that's new is that bad. Some things are an acquired taste. <gasps> don't say woof. I wasn't going to. Okay, I totally was. <laughs> but still, you interested? Sure. Why not? It's not like it'll be the end of the world or anything. Welcome back to Radio Alpha. Coming to you live from our studios in London. Radio Alpha. Good evening. War and death are now over. Everything has returned to how it was before. Except for the fact that we are now ruled by the glorious Empire of Slough. So no great change there. That's right, Stanley. A curious incident on the streets of Istanbul today, with several eyewitnesses claiming to have seen penguins roaming freely. Scientists say this could be down to migratory changes, or perhaps security lapses at the city zoo. Speaking of scientists, Brian Cox's latest show on the birth of the solar system premieres tonight, so don't miss out. But the most important news is this. The news is that things will be okay. They might not be now, they might not even be soon, but that's fine, isn't it? Bad things will happen, good things will happen, and we will be right here, reporting on it as it happens. The sun will shine, the birds will sing. And someone, somewhere, will be glad to hear your voice. Thank you for listening, and everyone have a safe night. Good night, and goodbye from us at Radio Alpha. And now, the shipping forecast. This is the shipping forecast, issued by the Met Office on behalf of the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency, at 1700 hours coordinated universal time, for the period of 1900 hours today to 1900 hours tomorrow. 
there are warnings of gales in Dover, White, Portland, Plymouth, Biscay and Trafalgar. The general apocalypse has, however, ceased for the moment. The general synopsis at midday. The moon's no longer crashing into the earth. The zombies and the aliens are gone. Milton Keynes is back with its roundabouts. And everyone is safely sat at home. Who the hell is for Shark? Why do we know his name? I don't think we will ever rightly know. A demon of the void, or just a check composer? Who cares about that noise now? Let it go. The world is safe, and we are here. There's nothing to hear anymore. So let's rejoice, be full of cheer. With our friends who we adore. The pits to hell didn't ever exist has closed and everything is no longer on fire. The sexiest man on earth, or of it, is Brian Cox, his little brother's rep stores ever higher. Brian Cox is one with the universe. Our walkie-talkie heroes are all mates And judging by the way that Young and Mitchell seem to smile Some of them may also go on dates The world is safe and we are here There's nothing to fear anymore So let's rejoice, be full of cheer Because we're with our friends who we adore And now, the area forecasts for the next 24 hours. Viking, westerly or northwesterly, 4 to 6, occasionally 7 in south decreasing to three for a time. Dogger, westerly backing southerly, three to five, increasing six at times. Biscay, southwesterly, five to seven, increasing. Oh, sod it. I'm off to the pub. Any of you coming? Yes, yeah. yeah. great idea. Yeah. 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 The world is safe, the world is safe. And, we are here. and we are here. There's nothing to fear. There's nothing to fear. So let's relax, go for a beer, go for a beer, because we will our friends who we adore, because we will our friends who we adore, because we will our friends who we adore. You know who I ship? You and Terry. What, the weatherman? He has a name. It's Mark. Was it Luke? No, I'm pretty sure the weatherman's name is John. My name is Matthew. Oh, never mind about that. I need a beer. Dvorak needs a beer also. That was the final part of the radio show at the end of the world. We hope you enjoyed it. Please use the link below to donate to our charities, or Dvorak will eat your soul. Radio Responses Roger Blighty here. I was just listening to your drama play and I have to say I am disappointed and angered. You're playing amateur dramatics over the radio now. What is this? Amateur hour? No, it's longer than an hour. It's worse than that. These lazy writers churn out a script in the final two days and think that no one will notice. Well, I noticed and I hate them. They stereotype and they steal jokes, and we all know stealing is a crime!